What do all of these words have in common? Thermometer, barometer, diameter, odometer, and parameter. All of these words end in meter. You've probably heard this word before, but what does it mean? Meter at the end of a word means measure. You use all kinds of measurements each day. How much sugar is needed in the cookies you're baking, if it will be warm enough to leave your jacket at home, how fast you're driving, how much a bag of apples will cost, and how much time it will take you to get from home to work. Most Americans are taught the English or standard system of measurement, but never get a really good dose of the metric system. Lucky for you, it is a much easier system to learn than the English system because all the measurements are base 10, meaning that when converting from one to another, you will always be multiplying or dividing by a multiple of 10. This is much easier than trying to do calculations between ounces and pounds and feet and miles. Because you may not be used to thinking metrically, it may take a little practice using and working with the metric system before you gain a good understanding of it and become more fluent in the measurement language of scientists and most non-Americans. I challenge you to sprinkle a little more metric in your life. Maybe read the milliliter measurement on your soda can or glance at the kilometer reading on your speedometer. Being able to picture metric quantities will really help with the rest of this course. We are going to start with the units of length so we can get back to this word meter that we started out with. The meter is the basic unit of length in the metric system. A meter is a tiny bit longer than a yard. For distances much longer than a meter, you would add the prefix kilo to make the measurement kilometer. A kilometer is the metric version of our mile, even though it's a bit shorter than our mile. A kilometer is equivalent to exactly 1,000 meters. Any unit that has the word kilo in front of it is equivalent to 1,000 units. You can attach the prefix kilo to about anything. If something takes 1,000 seconds, it takes a kilosecond. If a forest has 1,000 trees, it has a kilo tree. You get the idea. For distances much shorter than a meter, we would use either a centimeter or the millimeter. A centimeter is about the width of your pinky and there are exactly 100 centimeters in a meter. In fact, anything that has the prefix centi is one hundredth the size of that base unit. This should be very easy to remember because there are 100 cents in a dollar. One cent is one hundredth of a dollar. The last prefix you should be familiar with is milli. There are exactly 1,000 millimeters in a meter. Anything that has the prefix milli is one thousandth the size of its base unit. This one is a little bit more difficult to remember, but is definitely the prefix you would use the most in a chemistry class. Next on our list of important metric quantities is mass. This is one of the most important measurements a chemist makes. Mass is how much of something you have, or the amount of matter in an object. Don't confuse this with volume, which we'll get to in a bit. Mass is measured using a balance, and the basic unit for mass is the gram. To give you an idea of the relative size of a gram, the mass of a penny is about 2.5 grams. Sometimes people get confused with the difference between mass and weight. They end up being quite similar, because everything you and I do takes place on Earth. But mass and weight differ because mass is how much of something you have, and weight is the force of gravity on an object. Take a look at this example. Both of these blocks have the same mass. 